Howdy guys and gals, I'm Kyle Broderick. Welcome to The Social Regressive. In the background, we are continuing our Savage 12FV build series where we are taking a basic varminter and then really working it up to be a precision long-range monster, one that we can test in practical situations like hunting, do some target shooting at a thousand yards, and then our big culminating event is going to be target shooting at a mile. This 6.5 Creedmoor rifle is going to get the job done. If you haven't seen any of the, uh, the, the videos in this series, that playlist is growing and I'm gonna put a link to its playlist down below so you can check that out. But what we're gonna do now is switch tracks. We're going to add another project rifle. This is one that heads in a totally different direction. In this box are all the parts that I need to make a very specific rifle, a scout rifle. You guys may already be familiar with Jeff Cooper's scout concept. He worked with some others to kind of figure out what the rifle of the future would be. Something that kind of steps away from the traditional hunting rifle and does things a little bit differently. It's designed for practical use. It's designed to be very lightweight, handy, short, hard hitting. And what he wanted was something that had maybe a 16 inch barrel, uh, something that was using a lot of plastics to keep the weight down. It relied on its iron sights. It used a heavy cartridge like a 308 Winchester, maybe some kind of 338, like 338 Federal, a 450 Bushmaster, something that's gonna hit pretty hard and be able to take basically any game in North America, as well as being used as a defensive cartridge if necessary. This should be a rifle that'd be very good to defend uh, hearth and homestead, and then also be used uh, as a hunting rifle. So say if you had an ATV or something and you just wanted a rifle that you could sling on there and be ready for action if hogs or coyotes or something came around, it's a rifle that would get the job done. But there's nothing in that concept that says that a scout rifle has to be a bolt action rifle. That's what people have been uh, making lately. We've seen the... Um, uh, the Gunsight Scout rifle from Ruger. There's the Savage 110 Scout, which I tested recently and really enjoyed. My friends uh, really, really like that rifle. But there's nothing that really says it has to be a bolt action. So what we're gonna do is we are going to apply the concepts of the Scout rifle to an AR, either an AR-15 or an AR-10. And uh, as probably many of you have seen from the title already, I went with an AR-15 and we're going to build this rifle up from parts. In the next video, I'll show you the individual parts that I chose to make this. And then, yeah, we're gonna put it all together and see how it actually functions in the real world. I specifically chose these parts to kind of head in this scout direction to keep the rifle very lightweight. And we may actually get a good bit of precision in the mix as well. Okay, now one of the things that makes a scout rifle very different from a traditional hunting rifle uh, is going to be, first off, its reliance on iron sights. Recently, a lot of rifles are being produced without any kind of iron sights at all. They're relying on that scope. A scout rifle needs to have irons, so I do have a good set of AR-15 iron sights in here, and I'm going to show you the ones that I chose and why I chose them. But then the other kind of a way of sighting this rifle in is going to be a very peculiar kind of scope. Jeff Cooper wanted folks to use a, a, a scope like this one. This is actually a pistol scope, very low magnification. He was thinking maybe 2x, 2.5, up to maybe 3. And this is a good example right here. This is a one and a half to four, a Simmons. Unfortunately, these are no longer being produced uh, because this is a very nice pistol rifle scope. And you might notice that I said pistol. What this is, Jeff Cooper wanted to not only have a low magnification scope that's kind of ready for action in all kinds of scenarios, whether they're close or far, but he wanted a scope that sat further out on the rifle. You might have noticed on that Savage 110 Scout that if people had a, a scope on it, it was actually sitting pretty far away from their face, sort of reminiscent of scopes that you would get on uh, maybe the M1A a while back. You know, it, it has a, a rail that kind of sits a little further forward in front of the action a lot of times so that you can kind of clear that area where the action is and the, the brass is actually being ejected. Uh, but yeah, he wanted a, a scope that sat a little further out for, I think, a couple different reasons. First off, it's going to make it really easy to get behind that scope. For the most part, you're going to have a very generous eye relief. So if you're off a little bit, 
you're not going to uh, you know be greeted by just a blank just kind of black image uh, on the scope here until you get your eye in the right position it's going to be pretty forgiving but then it's also going to put its kind of focal distance a little bit closer to your target. If your target is down at 300 yards and you have a scope sitting at the traditional hunter distance, which is going to be about three and a half inches, then if you're looking from one to the other, looking through the scope and then looking out at your, your target, you're not gonna be able to get both really in the same focal plane, especially if it's uh, down around dusk or just uh, some kind of atmospherics or keeping things a little bit on the darker side. Uh, with this, if you put this a little bit further out, you're going to be able to get your, your focal planes a little bit closer to each other. It's going to be a little easier to watch your target and still be able to see it through the scope. Your eyes are gonna to have to bounce just a little bit instead of a massive uh, difference between the two. So yeah, this is not the scope that we're going to be using on this rifle, even though this is an, a, a good example right here, and the one that we tested on the Savage 110 Scout. I have another one inside here that we're going to uh, take a close look at. I'm really excited about this. This is one that I've wanted to test for a good long while now, and we're gonna see how this does. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, like, hit the notification bell, because we're going to have a handful of videos in this series, building this rifle up, showing off the parts that are in this box and why I chose them, and then getting out and shooting this rifle in some, I think, some kind of fun target shooting scenarios. And then maybe we'll get out and be able to do a little bit of hunting as well. Uh, thanks a bunch to the manufacturers that donated parts to this. I talked to various people at the Iraq Veteran 88 shoot and uh, some other places. And they, they were really excited about the concept and they wanted to get on board. So they threw in a bunch of the parts that you're going to see inside this box. Thank you also to patrons of the Destructive Arts for continuing to keep the lights on, keep the film rolling. Uh, you guys are really making these projects happen, both that 12FV and this one right here. And of course, all the reviews that are coming up in the future, we're going to have a whole lot of scope reviews. But thank you to Patrons Sportsman's Guide at the 338 Lapua Magnum level. Thank you, Peter, at the 300 Win Mag level. I'm going to see you guys around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the Destructive Arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.